Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of the Sit and Chat podcast. Today's episode is the very first, and it is with Sir Henry VIII. Welcome. It is a pleasure to have you on the podcast. It is such a pleasure to be here. You know, we really thought that we'd have a problem booking studio time with you, considering how busy your life must be. But since you stepped down as king, I guess it must not be as hectic as it used to be. Yeah, I do have a lot more free time than I used to when I was the king. Before we ask any questions, can you just introduce yourself and give our viewers a little overview of your life slash family now? Of course I can. For anyone who doesn't know, I'm the former king of England. I have had six wives over the course of my life, and those brought me three children. I was married to Catherine of Argonne for 24 years, and we had Mary. Then Anne Boleyn, and I had Elizabeth. And lastly, Jane Seymour, and I had my very first and my only son, Edward. Then I was married to Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, and Catherine Parr. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now we're just going to go straight into the long-awaited questions. We don't have very much time for this podcast today. We did show up a little late. So why did you want your first marriage to be annulled? Well, I wrote the Pope and told him our marriage had been very unlawful when truthfully I just needed a a male heir and she couldn't give me one due to her age. So why was it so important for you to have a male heir? I needed someone to be strong who could take over for me whenever I decided to step down because I knew my daughters would never be able to handle it. Okay, and for your second wife, why did you order to have Anne executed? I accused her of adultery, which very well could have been true. I was not a good husband to her by any means, but she couldn't give me a male heir, and I really needed one. Um, And I know Jane passed weeks after um, giving birth to Edward due to infection. For anyone that didn't um, catch up on that, Jane was your third wife. Um, I also know that's a very tough subject for you, so I won't ask you to speak on that. Um, And there's been several rumors as to why you divorced your fourth wife, Anne of Cleves. Is it true that you blamed her unattractiveness on you not being able to focus on your work as king? Yes, and I do know that it sounds bad. But if you had seen her, you would 100% agree with me. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't agree with you there. With your fifth wife, Catherine Howard, why did you imprison and then behead her? Well, you see, she had cheated on me before and on others when we were together. And then she cheated on me with her cousin while we were married. That's actually pretty shocking. And you're still married to Catherine Parr, is that correct? Yes, we are very happily married, although we have had our ups and downs, as all relationships do, but gladly we have been able to work them out. Um, If you wouldn't mind discussing the political ups and downs in your relationships, as I'm sure there are some, considering you're still in a higher-up status. Oh, no, yeah, I don't mind going to talk about that. Well, see, she supports Protestantism more than Catholicism, and as you know, I'm a Catholic, but we've worked that out with some counseling from friends. Um, And how did you feel about your son Edward ruling at just nine years old when you stepped down? Well, you see, he was my only male heir, so I wasn't too, you know, worried about it. And, you know, it couldn't be any worse than one of my daughters ruling until, sadly, he did get extremely sick. And whenever England went into an authoritative war with Scotland, Edward did sadly pass away there. And then after Edward passed, how did you feel whenever Mary took over? Well, she was the first female to take the throne, so I was very, very nervous and anxious, and I offered to step back in, but I wasn't allowed. So, but she was very Catholic, which I did like, and she did a good job for a woman. How did you feel about the nickname she earned during her rule, which was Bloody Mary? Well, since she's extremely Catholic, she did everything to convert people, and when that didn't work, she turned to persecuting Protestants and heretics. She even burned hundreds by the stake, therefore earning the nickname Bloody Mary. She only ruled for about five years and left no male heir. So your daughter Elizabeth took over. How did you feel about that? Well, you see, she was much more inclusive than any of us, which I guess would be a good quality, but I'm not too sure of it. Um, So she formed the Anglican Church and was very accepting of Catholic and Protestants. And for my last question, one everyone has been begging me to ask, 
why did you order for Thomas More to be beheaded? And for any of our viewers who don't know, Thomas More was a devout Catholic who served England as the Lord Chancellor. Well, originally when the court found him guilty, they wanted him to be hung, drawn, and quartered. But I just couldn't see him being put through that because after all, we were kind of close. And he was a very kind man. I figured being decapitated was a faster, you know, more painless way to go out, you know? Yeah, I can, I can very much agree on that. And that's all the questions that I have for you today. Thank you for being on our very first episode of The Sit and Chat. And thank you to our viewers for listening. And Henry, where can they find us? You can find The Sit and Chat on Instagram at TSAC1509 and on YouTube at TSAC1509. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Time to get back home to the old ball and chain. Well, send Catherine my love. We would love to have her on our next episode. Go ahead and drop a like down below. It only takes five seconds. And please leave a comment who you want to see on the next podcast. And we'll see what we can do. Time to skedaddle.